With the Boeing 747 program coming to an end, the 777X will become the American plane maker's flagship aircraft. Over at Airbus, production of the A380 has also ended. Be that as it may, the A380 is a newer plane than most of the passenger 747s produced and still has a fair bit more flying to do. So if we were to spot a Boeing 777X and Airbus A380 parked side by side at an airport sometime in the next few years, which plane would you hypothetically hop aboard? Let's compare the two jets in today's long haul video. The world's biggest operator of A380s, Emirates, is keeping a foot in both camps. According to sources, the Dubai-based airline has 119 A380s on their hands right now and has an order in for 115 Boeing 777Xs. Now, given the massive size of these planes, you would expect most airlines to opt for one type or the other. These days, about a dozen airlines have A380s under their name, although some of these airlines aren't operating the type at the moment. But of all of these A380 operators, less than half have orders in for 777Xs. In addition to Emirates ordering the 777X, British Airways plans to take 18, Etihad wants 25, Singapore Airlines will take 31, All Nippon Airways wants 20, and Qatar Airways is on the books for 74. But what's working against both planes is that they are big aircraft, particularly as the market is trending towards smaller planes. In total, 251 A380 aircraft were ordered and delivered. Meanwhile, Boeing already has over 300 orders for its 777X aircraft, with all signs pointing to more orders as the type enters service and gains the trust of prospective customers. If we put aside market conditions and demand for either type, what are the major differences between the two planes? What are the similarities? And what are the strengths and weaknesses of each aircraft type? Here's a handy table to provide an overview. Looking at the two jets, their weights and dimensions, it's clear how much larger the A380 is. However, despite its massive size, the Airbus double-decker has a reduced cargo capacity. Moreover, despite having a maximum payload that is about £20,000 greater than what the Boeing jets can offer, the A380's maximum takeoff weight is nearly £500,000 more. Indeed, all of these statistics highlight just how heavy of an aircraft the A380 is, which gives us all sorts of indications of its inefficiency relative to its Boeing rival. This first challenge is a bit of a no-brainer. As you can see, the A380 has a much, much larger capacity than even the largest 777X variant, the 7779. While the Boeing 7779 does very well with 414 seats on board, the Airbus A380 dominates with over 500 seats. Even looking at a three-class variation, the A380 just has way more room. This is due to the plane being double-decked, fitting in roughly twice the space on board. Traditionally, freight was one of the better but mostly ignored profit drivers for airlines. That's changed over the past few years, Many airlines are cross-subsidizing poorly loaded passenger services with freight. While some freight might be incredibly important, the act of transporting cargo also has the added advantage of not demanding drinks and constantly hitting the in-flight call button. Thus, the 777X appears to be the winner here. The A380 requires a lot of fuel, and as such, it has had to sacrifice cargo space for those big tanks. The A380 has room for 6,190 cubic feet of freight, whereas the 777X has room for 8,131 cubic feet of freight. Then, when it comes to range, the Airbus A380 can fly for 14,800 kilometers. The smaller of the 777Xs, the 777 can fly 16,090 kilometers while the larger 777 can fly 13,940 kilometers. On range, the 777-8 substantially outperforms the A380, but most of the orders so far have been for the 777 which has a slightly shorter range than the A380. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. The A380 has four engines, and the 777X only has two. 
In most cases, more engines will equate to more fuel being consumed. But it gets a little more complicated when we add in the aircraft's weight, what materials it's made out of, and general design principles to be as aerodynamic as possible. Built off the back of the famously fuel-efficient Boeing 787, the 777X reaps the benefits of all that experience. The chart you see here, produced by the International Council on Clean Transportation, visualizes fuel efficiency and how this relates to overall aircraft weight. So while the A380 might have way more fuel on board, it can carry 85,472 gallons compared to 52,300 gallons on the 777X, the A380 needs it because the plane is nowhere near as efficient as the 777X, costing the operator far more money in the long run. So while the 7799 might not have the range the A380 has, it's far cheaper to fly on a per kilometer basis. With four engines to power the plane, the A380 uses a crazy amount of thrust to get itself airborne. Of course, this is something required by the aircraft. The A380 has a maximum takeoff mass of 575,155 kilograms. In contrast, the two-engine powered 777X has a maximum takeoff mass of 351,534 kilograms. Moving on, when it comes to cost, airlines rarely pay list prices for planes. This simple fact is even more so the case these days. But if you were an airline boss with zero bargaining power, here's what the approximate going rates are for the 777X and the A380 planes. 888, $394.9 million. 779, $425.8 million and A380, $445.6 million. At face value, the 777X costs less. Break down on a seat-by-seat -seat cost, though, and the margins will narrow. But let's face it, if you can drop $425 million on a plane, you can probably drop $445 million. Admittedly, both aircraft types are on the more expensive end of the market, and in these cost-constrained times, that's going to work against the 777X as much as it worked against the A380 over the last two decades. The relatively small number of orders for both aircraft types means the economies of scale achieved with planes such as the Boeing 747 and Boeing 787 probably won't get realized here. While the A380 is a bigger plane and has an ongoing role in flying large numbers of passengers on high-volume long-haul routes, that role is becoming more and more niche. Passengers can be tough judges of planes. They like space and comfort, two things that cost airlines money. The A380 delivers on that for passengers. We haven't yet seen what the 777X delivers for passengers. It might be a great plane, or it might be more like the 787 Dreamliner, a plane that airlines like, but many passengers don't. Also working against the A380 is the sheer cost of operating the plane. As we stated before, those four big engines soak up a lot of jet fuel. Even though it's smaller, the lower cost of buying and operating the 777X works in its favor. For most airlines, it would be a preferred choice. However, working against the 777X is its troubled timeline coming to fruition. While test flights have begun, the plane has yet to be delivered to any airlines and has yet to fly any paying passengers amid ongoing delays. Indeed, airline customers have faced delay after delay, with some likely to be left waiting at least three years more than initial delivery schedules. It was all doom and gloom for the Airbus A380 following the rise of the pandemic. Hundreds of units were long-term parked amid continued restrictions. Still, the powerhouse has found itself back in the skies, deployed on key international routes across the globe. With this in mind, the 777X has yet to enter service, which makes it difficult to truly compare with revenue-earning aircraft. The jet was anticipated to enter service in 2020, but there has been a series of postponements. Now, the aircraft is not expected to begin its delivery process until 2025. Thus, Boeing has mass-hired teams of engineers to push forward with the program. Wrapping up with some final thoughts, the 777X looks like the better plane on paper. 
Nonetheless, there are some things we can't evaluate until the 777X starts taking passengers. And you watching this video will probably be thinking the same. The inability to actually fly on a 7799 makes it essentially impossible to evaluate and compare to any other aircraft currently in service. Regardless, the 777X has been primed to become a flagship in global fleets in the decades to come. With efficiency and sustainability being two core driving factors in the next chapter, the A380's prevalence will likely be limited in the long run, especially since several carriers have already dropped the type from their fleets. Until then, what are your thoughts about how the two planes compare? Let us know what you think of the aircraft in the comment section. Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.